Welcome everybody to another MB Older House tutorial. Um, this is like our third episode already. And in today's tutorial, we will be going over crank sensor replacement, um, mostly just for your 112, 113s, but I will also go into the differences uh, with the crank sensors in your 272, 273 motors, the different bolts, um, the style of them, things like that. And best way to see if you have one of these motors, the 112, 113, um, they're basically the ones that are pictured in there right now. But the best thing you could do is actually lift the um, your hood open and to see if they look like anything like this and see if you are dealing with one of the scenarios that I do come up with. Um, also, uh, we're gonna go over the tools. These are the tools you will be needing for this tutorial. You will be needing a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, a flashlight, to the left there is your crank sensor that's a new crank sensor uh, quarter inch extension the uh, about that looks like five inches long um, you will need a e8 inverted Torx uh, quarter inch swivel and a quarter inch ratchet so now we've gotten to one of the parts of the video which is my favorite to do which is the scenario basically what I do is I put together the story uh, it's just make-believe stuff, but um, seeing if you guys have dealt with something like this. Uh, basically, it's the weekend. You guys have been working Monday through Friday. Now it's time to trade in your POS of a car that you drive during the week and bring out the Mercedes from the garage. But, of course, you got to watch out for your nosy neighbor, Philip, who's always looking over the fence, seeing what it is you're doing. So now it's a beautiful day out. You got the wife and kids, maybe the girlfriend. I don't know, maybe the mistress. Not really sure. So, of course, you're bumping nothing but Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg the Chronic. You come to the traffic light, you're chilling, nodding your head, doing what you do. And then you just notice that the car just turned off. Now the light went from yellow to green. Now everybody's honking their horn. Everybody's looking at you, seeing what it is you're going to do. You can go ahead, crank it. car cranks, 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 but it doesn't seem to start. Everybody's going around you. You haven't have to put the hazards on. It went from a nice day to a pretty crappy day. Wife hates you, your kids hate you. I don't know, maybe your mistress hates you. So now your car has to get towed back home. Your neighbor, nosy Philip, can't seem to stop smiling at you. You end up pushing the car in your garage. You say, what the heck? I go ahead and try to crank it over one more time. Now it cranks and turns right back on. You look confused. You ask yourself, what the hell just happened? I might have the answer for you. So now we're ready to remove the crank sensor from the vehicle. Um, I decided to use a C320. Um, find it that there's not a lot of room between the firewall and the motor itself. And the first thing you want to do is take this uh, engine cover off. Take the two side pieces off. And then the engine cover is actually two pieces to it. There's the front piece, which just pops up and slides right out. And then there's the bigger section, which is in the rear, which just pops straight up. There's four clips that go on the motor itself. And then there's an the O-ring that goes around the massive flow sensor. And in this video, what I did is I ended up taking the massive flow sensor out and the elbow that goes onto the intake manifold. Um, just made it a lot easier for me to um, stick my hand in there and Again, you're going to want to do this when the engine is cold. Um, you don't want to risk uh, possibly burning your hand or any part of your body. Um, with your bigger motors like uh, or your bigger cars, like your E-Class, S-Classes, you don't have to do as much work to do the crank sensor, but watching this video might actually help you out in case you do need to remove something like I did in this one. So one of the first things I did is I removed this massive flow sensor and I did that by removing the bracket that holds it in place. I used my uh, screwdriver and then I pried that piece off. And then what I do here is I just quickly show you what it looks like um, once it's snapped in place, showing you what it should look like once it's all back together. After that, what I did is I removed the connector, which is just right of the massive flow sensor by prying on the two tabs, there's one up top, one on the bottom. You're gonna pry in that and then just, it, that connector just slides right out. And that's what the connector looks like. Second, what I did is I removed the massive flow sensor. That metal clip there holds the massive flow sensor in place. Once I did that, I was able to pull it right out. On this, this is actually the elbow here. That was a quick little video. But I removed the hose, which goes to the driver's side 
valve cover. So here, what I'm trying to do with my finger is I'm trying to pry in the second tab that holds this elbow in place. There's the top one, which is right there to the right, and then there's the bottom one. I'll show you later in the video, um, once I get this piece out, the two tabs, and then where that holds for the driver's side valve cover goes. So here I finally took the elbow out. There is the hose. This is it right here, and that actually goes to this valve cover here. This is the driver's side valve cover. And then if you look here, this is the top tab, and this is the bottom. This is the one you could get with a screwdriver. You could fit your hand right in there, straight down from the intake. This is the gaskets. Take a quick look to see how they fit on there in case they do come off. There's like little holes there that they fit in place. All right, so next what you're going to be looking at is the connector for the crank sensor itself. Um, the crank sensor actually sits on the driver's side. It's on the motor right before it connects to the transmission. I've taken the connector out. It's just a tab there. You might need to use like a Phillips or not a Phillips, but a needle nose pliers or something like that. This one came off fairly easy. There's just a tab. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my tools in there. As you can see, I've made space so I could fit my left hand right in there. And what I like to do is I take my tools, which is the E8 inverted quarter inch, a uh, quarter inch swivel and a quarter inch extension with my quarter inch ratchet. What I do is I fit the tool down there and with my other hand I guide it on top of the, the bolt that I'm trying to remove. What I stick in the socket, the E8 inverted socket, is dum dum, which is basically like sticky material so when I do get the bolt loose it doesn't fall down uh, deeper into the motor somewhere where I can't get it. So there I break the bolt loose and then I continue to remove it by hand or whichever way it is that you want to do it. Once I'm done so I will show you what the bolt looks like. And then a good thing to remember is here is the bolt. This is what it looks like. Uh, you can see the dum dum on the bolt itself. It's a great device to use so you don't lose the bolts. It doesn't fall in nowhere driving you nuts. And the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the crank sensor itself. Um, a, a must a must that you must do is compare the two, new and old, and what you want to do is, what I'm trying to show you here is there's like spacers in there, and sometimes they'll give you the wrong tool, so you're going to want to make sure that the old one looks exactly like the new one, two pins.